Hi, this is Jeff West with Oracle, and today I'm going to be talking to you about an advanced feature of JMS and WebLogic called Unit of Order. The JMS specification does not guarantee that messages are delivered in order. A best effort is made, but there's no guarantee that it will actually happen. This creates challenges for architects trying to design solutions for complex business workflows that require messages or process in sequence. Because of this, the WebLogic team developed a feature for JMS called Unit of Order. Unit of Order guarantees that the messages that are tagged with the same unit of order are processed in sequence. This applies both to individual JMS destinations or distributed destinations such as a distributed queue or distributed topic. In the case of a distributed destination, messages of the same unit of order are delivered to the same distributed destination member. Unit of order also allows you to generate multiple units of order in parallel from the same client, while still guaranteeing that the messages for each discrete unit of order are processed in sequence. In addition to solving the JMS message sequencing problem, this can also reduce or eliminate database contention. One case where this could happen is if you have a set of messages to update one customer object or one row in a database. You would prefer that they are processed in sequence so they're not contending for the same lock in the database and locking up threads in your application server. This can have a negative impact on performance. Next, I'll be showing you a demo of unit of order in action. I've started by creating a vanilla WebLogic domain without any managed servers, clusters, or resources. We'll configure the base domain and base cluster with a WLST script. Then I'll show you how to configure a JMS module to use unit of order and talk about the different features or different configuration options that are available for unit of order. Next, I'll cover the client code, showing you how, how to send normal JMS messages, how to send discrete units of order, and then how to send multiple units of order in parallel. Let's take a look at the code that generates the messages for the unit of order demo. In my main method, I've implemented it so I can pass in a command line parameter to either send a normal batch of messages without unit of order enabled, or one discrete unit of order, or multiple units of order in parallel. For each one of these cases, I can specify a text string that comes across in a JMS text message, the number of messages to send, and the delay after each message is sent before the next is sent. Next, let's take a look at the send message batch implementation. The send message batch method is implemented in the WebLogic JMS producer class. This class uses WebLogic specific implementation classes to send JMS messages. In the send message batch method, I begin a session with my connection factory and then iterate through a loop, sending a message, and then sleeping after each message is sent. After I iterate through the loop, I end the session. Let's take a look at the send message method. In this method, I check to see if a session is created. If not, I start one. Then I create a text message using the text string that's been supplied. Then I use the producer to send the message. When I begin a session, I'm creating a queue session using my connection object, and then I'm creating a producer using my session. When I end the session, I'm closing the producer and session. And I have also written a method so I can commit the session if I'm using a, J a transacted session with JMS. Next, let's look at the methods that I'm using to send messages tagged with a unit of order. First, we'll look at the send discrete unit of order method. This method is largely the same as the send message batch method. Let's go back and take a look at that. 
with the exception of these three lines of code. Here, I'm generating a unique string value for the unit of order name and then calling set unit of order on the producer object. Otherwise, this method is, same, is the same as the send message batch method, where I iterate through a loop, sending a message, and then sleeping after every message. Next, let's look at how to send a parallel, parallel units of order. In this case, I generate three unique strings, and I'll be using those for three distinct units of order. In this case, for every iteration through the loop, I send a message tagged with each of the three units of order. Then I sleep, and then I close the session. I'm starting with a vanilla WebLogic domain that does not include any managed servers or clusters. We'll start by executing a WLST script that will create a base cluster with managed servers and JMS servers. Next, I'll create a JMS module for the unit of order resources that I'll be using in the demo. I'll be creating one connection factory and one distributed queue. For the connection factory, I'm going to disable server affinity so that the messages within one connection or one session are balanced across the cluster or across, across the distributed destination members. I have also deployed a message-driven bean that will consume the messages off the unit of order queue and display a message on the screen. Let's go ahead and start the demo. First, I'm going to send a normal batch of messages that do not have unit of order enabled. Here, I'm sending 21 messages, and you can see that they're being load balanced across the two servers. Next, We'll send one discrete unit of order. Here you can see that this unit of order is not being load balanced and all of the messages are going to the first server. Here I send a discrete unit of order again and you can see again on the left side that they're being delivered to server number one. For the third discrete unit of order, you can see that they're now on the right side and they're all being consumed on server number two. Next, let's take a look at parallel units of order. Here you can see that one unit of order is being processed on server one, while two are being processed on server two. Let's run it again and see what happens. Now you can see that two units of order are being processed on server one, and one unit of order is being processed on server two. Now you can see two on server two and one on server one.